Just joking. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera, and guess what we're making today? Uh, something with... Yup, Irish stew. We were recently at an Irish pub, and of course we had to order the Irish stew, and it was so delicious, so I had to recreate it at home because our weather is all of a sudden fall, and it is getting colder and chillier outside and all I want is soups and stews and comfort food. All written recipes are available to my patrons on Patreon. You can find out more information in the description below. But this recipe will also be in our upcoming new recipe book that we are still working so hard on and we'll get it out to you ASAP. We're in the home stretch guys. We're I know. really close. It really is close. really close. And we will update you. Yep. So let's get started. So I have my Instant Pot already on saute mode, adjusted to more, which is the high heat, and it's already hot, right? It, you know what's interesting is that it said hot, and now it just says on. I think it fluctuates so that it's not like continually being heated at the same temperature, so it does fluctuate a little bit, but that's fine. Let's get the meat going. We have three pounds of Boneless short rib, and I like using the boneless short rib because I love the flavor of it, the marbling of the fat. But if you don't want to spend the extra on short rib, you can always use stewing meat, or you can get a roast and cut it up yourself so that the pieces cook evenly. With stew meat, it is like basically the scraps from whatever the butcher is cutting up. And so you might have some short rib and some um, roast or some chuck and some so all of that is your stew meat and what I find is the textures are not consistent so I like to use just the short rib and the short rib is fantastic it is because it's fatty and tasty and moist and soft when you cook it just right I have a cup of flour already in my bowl and I'm going to add uh, about a tablespoon of salt and about a teaspoon of black pepper or however much you can grind. I'm just going to mix it up with my favorite utensil to cook with. Huh. <laughs> and we're just going to dredge the pieces of meat that I've cut up into one and a half to two inch pieces and we're gonna brown that on all sides. Okay, so this one is still connected. Uh, <laughs> did you uh, manage to get them apart? Nope. Okay, I guess you're not gonna be able to do it with chopsticks. Maybe. Nope. Uh, That's fine. I'm just going to leave them together. I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. You don't want to overcrowd your meat as you brown it, otherwise it won't brown. It will just steam and you don't want that. You want to get a good crust on the meat. I'll probably need to do this in maybe three batches. I didn't do a very good job cutting, huh? Look at that. Whoa, dude. After about three minutes or so, you can flip them over. Let me show you how there's nice crust on it. So I'm just going to take them out now. I've only browned two sides and I think that's good enough for me because all I want to do really is to elevate the flavor and we're doing that by browning the meat. While that is still browning, I am going to cut up my vegetables and we're just going to cut them up into big chunks because we're going to be cooking it for quite some time. Well, half an hour in the pressure cooker, but 
we don't want the vegetables to be too mushy. So I'm just going to cut this up into eighths. The onions. I've got two medium onions. And I have six medium carrots. And again, cut them into larger chunks. I still have quite a bit of fat in here. And see all those brown bits at the bottom? That's where all your flavor is. And that's how we elevate the flavor of the dishes that we make is to take the extra time to brown the meat and it will give you a deep, rich flavor that you wouldn't get otherwise. So we're gonna put our onions and carrots in there and we're going to just stir it around in the fat for a bit. Now our goal is always to provide you with simple recipes with ordinary ingredients that your whole family will enjoy. So hopefully these are all ingredients that you would have available. The one thing that we can provide is the cooler weather to really enjoy these stews and soups. I so know. So for all you Amer friends that are going through the 80s and 90s weather still, <laughs> just have patience. <laughs> but enjoy your summer. I have four large cloves of garlic. Just removing the skin. So you'll find the juices from the onions will start to deglaze the bottom of the pot. See how it's already starting to clear up a little bit. And so we'll just keep doing that and start scraping from the bottom. And we'll be adding some liquid to deglaze the rest of it. And I'm just going to add my garlic now. And I like adding garlic at the end because I find that if I add it at the same time as the onions, the garlic will tend to burn because it cooks faster and also because you're mincing it. But if you just add it near the end and cook it for about 30 seconds, you'll get all the flavor and the garlic doesn't burn. It's just a little tip. Okay, just cooking that for 30 seconds with the garlic. Oh, it smells so good. So we're gonna deglaze the bottom of the pot now with the cup of Guinness. Oh, it smells so good right now. And you can feel at the bottom whether or not there's bits lingering. So make sure that you scrape up all the little brown bits because otherwise the Instant Pot might freak out and, and tell you that it's overheating or burning. And you would also be missing out on those extra flavors, those brown bits. Whoa. Yep. We're just gonna let that simmer for two minutes. It's been two minutes. I'm gonna cancel the saute mode. Make sure that, that you didn't create more brown bits at the bottom, which I don't think it did. We're gonna add one tablespoon of Worcester. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. I'm just eyeballing, as because usual. Hashtag, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. And I've got two tablespoons of tomato paste that I have frozen into little discs from my last time I used tomato paste. So I'm just gonna add that as well. And you can find this tip along with some others in this video up here. I've got two teaspoons of thyme, dry thyme, you can use fresh thyme if you want. I'm, I'm glad you had enough thyme. I uh, discovered that my aunt has a bay leaf tree. I don't know if it's called bay leaf tree. Anyways, she just cut a very small stalk from her tree. And look at all the bay leaves. So I'm going to add a couple of these. I'm just going to start with a teaspoon of salt. I tend to undersalt because oversalting, you can't fix that. But undersalting, people can add more salt if they need. And about 
half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm adding my beef back in along with any juices. See all those juices? Those are all, that's also going back in. All right, so I believe there's enough liquid in there that will make a nice thick stew. And we're gonna lock the lid into place, making sure the ceiling knob is on the ceiling. And we're going to pressure cook on high for 30 minutes. I can't wait. I wish there was smell of vision because truly it's good. It smells so good. I don't know why it still bugs me. Whoa, look at that. Looks pretty yummy. Look at all that bubbling of the thickness of the stew. All right, it looks so good. If you want to reduce the sauce some more, you can always put it on saute mode and just boil some of it off, maybe another five minutes or so. Otherwise, you can serve it like this on top of rice or mashed potato or even um, some French bread on the side. So the technique to cook the stew is the same technique I use to make um, beef bourguignon. And that recipe is in my first cookbook, and you can also find a link to the video here. It's still one of my favorite videos to watch because it was filmed in France, and we had such an amazing time there. The kids still talk about it, and it was like, I don't know, five years ago now? All right, you all ready for? <laughs> what is that? Look at that thing. You know, it's a little, bit more orangey than the one we had at the Irish pub. Maybe I put in too much tomato paste and hmm. not use enough Guinness. <laughs> yeah, not enough Guinness. That's it. That may be the case. Let's get on this. Short rib is one of my favorite cuts of meat in a stew like this. So I'm quite excited. Mm. It's good. Like the texture of the beef is soft. And the, I love again that the veg is in discernible pieces, not pressure cooked to smithereens. The texture sufficiently soft, nice. Even the onions are discernible. Thanks. Need any more salt and pepper? Oh, good question. I would add, um, Pepper, because I like that bite of the pepper, and a little bit more salt to just sharpen up the flavor profile entirely. I would say now that I've had a taste of it is, I would go, I would suggest next time we do this is less tomato paste because it will be less reminiscent of like another tomato based stew and more Guinness. And I think I would like that richer flavor of the Guinness to shine through more. But otherwise, looking forward to lunch. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. So I hope you all agree that this is another simple recipe that you can make at home with ordinary ingredients that your whole family will enjoy. If you decide to use stewing meat, I would suggest that you increase the cook time to maybe 40, 45 minutes. And, but if you use short rib, it'll be done in 30. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel here, check out my first cookbook here and other recipes off to the side there. Till next time, be simple, ordinary and joyful.